All right, so now we're going to talk a bit about pH and the pH scale. Uh, so first of all, the definition of pH or, or what the pH scale is or what pH is, is it is the concentration of hydrogen ions. So the concentration of hydrogen ions in a solution. <clears throat> so hydrogen ion here has an H+. plus. If you think of our uh, hydrogen atom here, uh, recall that our hydrogen in the center here is our nucleus. We have a proton in there. We have one electron on the outside here. And when our hydrogen becomes an ion, we can actually lose this electron. And then what we end up with is just this lone uh, proton in the middle here in the nucleus. And so this gives us a hydrogen plus, right? Because if we've lost our electron, our negative, our one negative to our one positive doesn't equal out anymore to be a neutral. <clears throat> so if we've now lost this negative, now what we have left is our, our hydrogen, our proton. And so as we're working throughout the semester, uh, it's important to keep in mind that when we're talking about a, an H+, plus, a hydrogen ion, that what we're really talking about here is a proton. Uh, when we look at things like uh, the electron transport chain, when we look at things like um, <clears throat> glycolysis, uh, those different cellular processes, when we take a look at that, we're going to talk about losing protons or losing hydrogens. Uh, and so those are kind of interchangeable at this point when we're talking about this at the level. So our pH scale, uh, or pH, is a measure of the concentration of hydrogen ions in a solution. And so if we think about water, uh, and usually the solution we're talking about, the solvent, is water, uh, especially when we're talking about the human body. We have a lot of water in the human body. Our blood is composed mainly of water. Uh, so <clears throat> we're talking about water. Remember, water is H2O, which we can draw with the O and the two H's coming off here. Now, if we kind of look back and, and keep track of our electrons, recall that a bond is actually two electrons here, a uh, little bit of a, a drawing style difference here. But then the oxygen also has other electrons here in its outer shell. So if you remember the outer shell having eight, uh, we have our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons there. Uh, these two here in a bond with this hydrogen, and then the other two over here in a bond with that hydrogen. Uh, so it can be drawn in just that way. So in order to kind of keep track of our electrons, we'll draw it that way for right now. And so what we see is we have our H2O, and then in just a, a container of water here. So if we're just looking at pure water, what we see is a reaction. Uh, what we see is if we have water around water, it goes back and forth. <clears throat> it goes back and forth between this guy on the left here, these electrons over here, stealing this hydrogen from another water molecule. Now remember the oxygen is very, very electronegative. It's pulling electrons toward it, um, pulling uh, these electrons, and, and it's very, very negative. So the positive hydrogen uh, is attracted to that negative oxygen, and sometimes it's able to pull that hydrogen to it. When that happens, it's just going to grab the hydrogen, and these electrons are going to go back to this molecule here. I think I don't want that line there for a moment. So these electrons then here are going to go there. And so then what we end up with, and this is just regular water, it does this uh, spontaneously on its own, it goes back and forth. That's why I drew this reaction here. We're not going to go into uh, drawing out chemical reactions, but uh, this means it can go this direction, and it means it can go back this direction. So they go back and forth. So then what we end up with here, it's grabbed this other hydrogen. We'll keep track of our electrons here. And then now we're in a situation where... We have a positive charge because now we have more uh, protons here than we have electrons. So this is a hydronium ion. Hydronium ion. And then what we're left with on this side here is our oxygen with a single hydrogen. Those electrons went back to the oxygen, and it's a negative charge. So this is our hydroxide. Whoops hydroxide ion, and it's a negative ion. So then what we see is that when we have a container of water or a body of water, uh, we see these reactions going back and forth all the time. So our water molecules are going to naturally make hydronium ion, hydronium ion and hydroxide ion, and then they'll go back together, and then they'll form more H2Os and, and back and forth. <clears throat> So what we see then is we can see this reaction, but if we look just at a single um, molecule here of water, we can kind of separate it out, and what we see is that we can then spontaneously also have this 
hydrogen, let's say this one over here, leave, and then these electrons are going to go to the oxygen here, and so we'll see this hydrogen being separate from our then hydroxide ion. And then so we have our proton, remember this is just our proton here, or called our hydrogen ion, and then this again is our hydroxide ion. So basically what we see, if we kind of look at this last one, which is a little bit more incomplete compared to this, but if we look at this last piece, what we have then is water. And we have water is spontaneously separating into our hydrogen ion and our hydroxide ion. And this is kind of the basis of pH. So if pH is the measure of this guy here, of our hydrogen ion, um, then at first what we're measuring is the pH of water. And uh, the pH of water, it's, a, it's neutral, and that's our basis for the pH scale. Uh, our neutral water has a pH of 7. <clears throat> And what that means is that we have an equal amount of our protons here, of our hydrogen ions, to our hydroxide ions, right? Because we've separated that out, um, but they're equal. This is a one-to-one -one relationship here. We have one hy hydroxide ion and one hydrogen ion. And this gives us that pH of 7. So if we take a look at our pH scale as a whole, our scale actually goes from 0 to 14. <clears throat> so if we look at our... Uh, pH scale. This is kind of timeline here. We have 14 on one end and 0 uh, or 1 on the other end. And then right in the middle we have 7. So right in the middle our 7 is neutral. This is where we find our water. Now everything below here, everything below 7 to 0 is considered acidic or is an acid. And what that means is that in pure water, let's see, they're going to separate into ions, right? We saw the hydrogen ion and we saw the hydroxide ion, and then they're going to separate. But in water at our neutral H2O, uh, what we see is an equal amount of both. Now acids, or something that is acidic, <clears throat> are ionic molecules that are going to dissociate to release hydrogen ions. So let me write that down, ionic molecules. that dissociate to release our hydrogen ion. And so what this does is this increases the amount of our hydrogen ion, right? So if we're releasing that, so for an example, we have our hydrochloric acid, right? So HCl, this is hydrochloric acid, and when we place HCl in water, what we see happen is we have the hydrogen ion separate uh, from our chloride ion. We have our different ions here. And so right here, you can see there's not an equal amount of our hydroxide ion, right? We just have an increase in our hydrogen ions. We don't see an increase in our hydroxide ions at the same time. And so in this solution, what we've seen then is that we've increased our hydrogen ion concentration. So this right here, hydrochloric acid, then is considered an acid because when you place it in water, it dissociates and we get more hydrogen ions. And so anything from uh, anything below 7 down here is going to be acidic, which means when we add it to water, it will dissociate and give us more hydrogen ions. Anything above 7, up to this 14 then, is considered basic. And then basic is similar in that it is an ionic molecule that dissociates but it releases our hydroxide ion. So instead of releasing our hydrogen ion, we're going to release our hydroxide ion. And so when we release our hydroxide ion, in this case, then we're going to have an increase in hydroxide, which then will be basically a decrease in our hydrogen, right? So if we have more of the hydroxide ions in solution in water, and then we have a decrease in our hydrogen ions. So an example of a base right here, our NaOH, when it is added to water, then we see it separate into the sodium plus our hydroxide ion. Uh, so then we have more hydroxide ion in the water. <clears throat> so this is our, our pH scale. Uh, anything below 7, again, is acidic. Anything above 7 is basic. And that's due to the dissociation of our hydrogen ions and our dissociation of our hydroxide ions. So if the pH scale is an indicator of the amount of hydrogen in solution, 
Uh, we have our, our different things on, on the low side or the high side. And the reason this is important is because in anatomy and physiology, uh, we keep things in a very, very small window. Uh, so, for example, our blood pH has to stay between 7.35 and 7.45. Uh, so it's a very, very narrow range. Uh, we need to be right in the middle there, pretty close to neutral. And if we go below 7.35, what would that be? If I went below 7.35, then we're talking about it being acidic, right? Which means that we would have acidosis and would be diagnosed with acidosis, blood acidosis. If, however, we are greater than 7.45-ish, then, let's see, what are we doing if we're going this direction? Alkalosis, right? So, if we don't keep our blood within the 7.35 and the 7.45, then we run into issues. We, we become acidic or we become alkaline or basic. And this is a problem because either of these situations, either acidosis or alkalosis, is going to change all of the biological molecules in our body. Um, most importantly, it can denature our proteins. And if we denature our proteins, that's a very serious issue because our proteins are typically our enzymes. And our enzymes are what go are going to assist all of the chemical reactions in our body. And so if we have enzymes and we're denaturing them, uh, which means that we're breaking them apart, they're falling apart because they're not within the correct pH range, uh, then we're going to be affecting our entire metabolism. We're going to be affecting every single thing that's happening in our body, um, which can be a very, very serious issue. Now, the way that we kind of go about making sure that this doesn't happen because we do add things like acids and bases into our body. Uh, so for example, uh, if you're drinking or let's say you're eating uh, some tomatoes or something, tomatoes are acidic, you're adding that to your body, your blood somehow is going to have to compensate for that. Or if you're having a, a banana, it's also acidic. Or if you're talking about having some soda or some wine or something, that's acidic. So as we're putting these things, I think lemon juice or orange juice, things in our body, then we're changing the acidity, we're changing the pH of our blood. And so our body has to compensate for that. And it does that by using buffers. Now a buffer is something that our body uses to maintain this narrow pH range. So it, um, that's right, maintains... How about not the, but a. So we have buffers, and it's going to minimize the changes, right? So we're, we're minimizing the pH change. So we want to keep it within that 7.35 and 7.45. And so we're trying to make sure that even if we put something acidic in our body, that it's not going to make us go into acidosis and start denaturing our proteins and our enzymes stop working and our body stop functioning. Uh, so we have buffers in our body that are going to resist that change. And so typically when we think of buffers, we, we kind of think of our hydrogen ion sponges. So typically uh, when we have a, a buffer in the body, what it's going to do is it's going to tie up this increase in hydrogen ion and keep it from floating around and increasing the pH, right? So if we have a buffer that is going to grab onto it, let's say our bicarbonate buffer, we'll just give an example our bicar bicarbonate buffer, what we see is that our HCO3 minus, which is our bicarbonate, will then combine with our hydrogen ion. And when it does this, it makes our H2CO3. <clears throat> um, and in this case, what we've done now, if you look at this molecule, is we've bound up hydrogens here. Uh, so rather than having this free-floating hydrogen ion out there, which is going to be an increase in pH, or uh, I'm sorry, it's going to be a decrease in pH, which can be very dangerous, which would be acidic. <clears throat> Instead, we bind it to the bicarbonate, and when we do that, we end up having this molecule floating around, and when this molecule is floating around, then we don't have the hydrogen ions floating around. Uh, this is carbonic acid. 
And so if we have carbonic acid in our blood, we don't have our hydrogen ions in the blood, and then our body stays within the, that narrow range, the 7.35 to 7.45. However, then, our, carbon, our carbonic acid can then go back and release the hydrogen ions and go back to bicarbonate so it can be reused. And so we have our bicarbonate that's floating around in our bloodstream. When we have an increase in our hydrogen ions, it's going to soak those up, uh, going back to the sponge idea. It's going to grab onto those hydrogen ions, turn it into carbonic acid, and then it's going to float around in the bloodstream. Maybe it'll go up to the lungs, uh, start to release uh, some of that or, or go somewhere else to release it. We'll talk about uh, where it's going to go. But um, it's going to float around the bloodstream, and at some point, it's going to release that hydrogen ion again, and then it's going to become bicarbonate again so that it can then stick around in the bloodstream, picking up more hydrogen ions and maintaining this narrow pH range. Uh, and we're going to talk more about buffers, especially as we move into things like the respiratory system, because it has a lot to do with our CO2, uh, our breathing, and how we are able to maintain pH um, in our respiratory system or with our respiratory system. We'll also talk about it in the urinary system. Uh, so it's important at this point to understand that um, buffers are going to allow us to maintain our narrow pH, and it does this by kind of soaking up or grabbing onto the hydrogen ions, uh, holding onto them until it gets to a point where it's able to let them go and they can be released from the body uh, or neutralized otherwise.